Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am caking a two-tiered mermaid cake full of glitter and pastels and texture and mermaid tails. So I'm starting with a six inch uh, cake round. Um, it's about five inches high and I'm crumb coating my cake here. Uh, you will see the four inch, that's about five inches high. So it fit about 15 to 20. That's the serving size is here. Uh, it may be more where you are. So um, for the four inch layer, that's what this is. I have a small cake board under the cake and that is for support. So when I stack them, the uh, four inch cake won't sink into the six inch cake. Now I always pop my cakes in the refrigerator um, after the crumb coat, which is kind of controversial. I've seen in the comments, people are like, oh, you refrigerate your cake? Yes, I refrigerate my cake. It may not work for you, okay? I think it depends on the climate. Um, I'm in a humid, humid hot climate, so yes, I have to refrigerate my cakes or <laughs> buttercream will be everywhere. But if you choose not to, that is perfectly fine. Here, you see me creating somewhat of an ombre pastel texture. These are the colors that the client wanted. And I, I think they're pretty, like I'm, I'm, I'm digging the pastels. And this is the easiest way that I apply texture to my cake. I simply take an offset spatula and go around and around with my turntable. Um, this turntable and my other cake supplies like that red mat, that non-slip mat, which I absolutely love. You know what? I'm going to do a video about the cake things that I love. Would you guys be interested in that? Because that red non-slip mat that I ordered from Amazon is amazing. Like, <laughs> I love it. So I'll leave that link in the, the description box below too, guys. So if you do want to see that video, please let me know. On to the molds. These were the molds that I used to create the details for this cake. And this is the fondant that I use, the colors. Um, and I mixed a bit of CMC powder into my fondant so it would dry out. I needed those mermaid tails to be nice and uh, stiff and hold their shape because they were the toppers for my cake. So pretty. So for molds like this with uh, very fine, small details, what I'll do, because sometimes your fondant will get stuck in the mold, um, to combat that you can put a bit of cornstarch in before you press the fondant in. But what I like to do is flip the mold over and pull the mold off of the fondant instead of trying to pull the fondant out of the mold, if you get what I'm saying. So here I am pulling my chilled cakes out of the refrigerator and I am on to the stacking. I like to use boba tea straws uh, with stacking and I cut them to the height of my cake. Some people, I left this in here because some people pull the straws out and then cut all the straws to the same height. I thought about doing that and then I changed my mind. So this is me putting all the straws in and then cutting cutting them to the height. Um, sometimes your cakes are uneven when you do it that way, but this was a small cake and it was fine. <laughs> So 
So guys, I thought I recorded this step, but I did not. As you can see, my accents and mermaid tails are shiny. And I applied some edible luster dust from the Sugar Art to all of my accents. And they have a pump spray too that I sprayed on my cake. But I definitely did that outside because I'm not getting luster dust all over my cake studio. <laughs> But I will leave a link to the Sugar Art Edible Luster Dust in the description box as well, along with the coupon code to save 15% off. So if you do buy it and use it, use my coupon code and let me know what you think about them. Like a lot of Luster Dusts are non-toxic, but theirs are actually edible. So I love them. You can see them on this cake. Looks pretty awesome, don't you think? If you think so, go ahead <laughs> and like this video and subscribe. I drop a new cake video every Wednesday and I will see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.